G'day mate, and welcome back to Oxen Included with me, Jenny. Today, I want to cover cooling. Well, I want to cover cooling as best, best as we can in Oxen Included. So, really for cooling, there aren't many options. Um, we have cold biomes, and by all means, you can run hot liquids, hot gases into a cold biome to cool them down, and then bring them back in your base. This is a very, very good method. Uh, due to the amount of thermal mass inside a cold biome, especially if you don't dig it up, it can take 100, 200 cycles um, for that cold biome to heat up enough from your base that it, it's finally no longer going to serve its purpose. Um, on top of that, you have wheeze warts. Now, wheeze warts do consume... Well, they don't consume. They... Uh, cool gases. So, as we can see, this particular wheeze wart here is consuming carbon dioxide. Bad example. Let's go with... Hopefully you get a little bit of oxygen. No. Let's go with this guy, who's also got a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of carbon dioxide. It's consuming a gas and then cooling that gas down and then spitting it back out. Um, that's how wheeze warts work. Now, of course, when they're wild, they have 25% throughput. When you domesticate them, which I've actually done over here, they actually have 100% throughput. So they provide a lot more cooling. Now, the catch is when you domesticate them, you need to give them phosphorite. Now, phosphorite is something you're going to dig up around the map, but you can also find a fair bit of it inside uh, with Dreco. So when you domesticate Drecos, one of their, uh, what they actually excrete is phosphorite, so that is your best source of renewable phosphorite. Now, Wizwars, as I said, are one sort of cooling method. You've got to remember you do need to add phosphorite into them. Um, in the case of me, I'm using an auto sweeper who's going to pick up the phosphorite and shove it in the bottom of the farm tile. Um, you can feed your Wizwars from the bottom of the farm tile to, to keep them up and running. Um, but in saying that, it means that you can't insulate whatever area they're cooling, so I am losing a certain amount of cooling out the bottom of these tiles. Now, in these particular examples, um, all these are set up with 5 degrees gas or liquid on the right-hand side and 95 degree uh, polluted water on the left-hand side. So, I have my Wizwats going flat out, and as you can see, all we're doing is we're moving some hydrogen around from left to right, or right to left, left to right. It's coming in at 90-odd degrees, and the Wizwats are doing a pretty good job of cooling it all the way down to about 20 odd degrees before it exits the system, comes over this side, and gets heated right the way back up to 95 degrees. So we are slowly, ever so slowly, cooling this polluted water by cooling it with Wizwats. Our next option for actually cooling the base is the anti-entropy entropy thermo nullifier, um, AET for short. Nobody really ever used the, the full name because it's a pain to say. Now, this guy over here provides 80,000 uh, duplicate thermal units worth of cooling. In saying that, um, you do need to have to feed it hydrogen. It only takes 10 grams per second, so it doesn't consume a lot of hydrogen, and it does provide some decent amount of cooling. In, but with all that, um, I've got the exact same experiment, well, the exact same setup down here. I'm bringing in uh, hot hydrogen from my left-hand side, trying to cool down that polluted water, and taking out the cold hydrogen. As we can see over here, we're bringing in at 92, we're bringing in at 92. It's leaving at 33, it's leaving at 21. Um, this guy going flat out inside a hydrogen room, so the backing gas is actually hydrogen, which has uh, a better... Uh, thermal conductivity than oxygen so much much better thermal conductivity than oxygen uh, it's still losing out to four Wiesworts so it does provide cooling but it's not a lot of cooling so it is something you guys need to keep in mind um, obviously this is pretty extreme we're trying to go from 95 degree you know liquid which has a very very large thermal mass and there's a lot of it all the way down to as cold as we can get it um, our next option is a ice maker, which I need to find a dupe. Idle dupe. You. Devon. It's always Devon. Come here, Devon. Come show us how an ice maker works. So an ice maker, we throw in water, and it's, it's had quite a few tweaks during its life cycle. And it's going to cool down that water from whatever temperature we fed it in at down to, I think it's minus 5 degrees. 
uh, in, uh, but with that, it's actually going to produce heat in the local area. So, as we can see, this poor machine has started heating up. It's actually heating up quite significantly for the amount of liquid it's actually cooling down. So, even with an ice maker making ice, you need to then cool the ice maker probably with some ice. So, not exactly the best method for cooling your base. Um, next couple we have are not not cooling devices but really a, what what would be referred to in real life as a heat pump so what these do is these transfer they transfer heat from one area to another area um, and we have the uh, th uh, thermo aquatuner and the thermo regulator one of these uh, so that the aquatuner obviously does liquid and the regulator obviously does gas now what i've actually got is i have um, my polluted water over on the left hand side at 95 degrees in both these cases and we're bringing uh, polluted well we're bringing clean water in at 91 degrees and the thermo aqua tuna cools that liquid down by 14 degrees now the more the more uh, the higher the specific heat capacity of the liquid increases the rate at watch at what the aqua tuna needs to run at so the amount of heat that gets dumped out of the machine and therefore cooling that goes in the liquid if i had a liquid that had a much higher specific heat capacity for example cool, super coolant my thermal aqua tuna would dump a lot more heat into the surrounding area if i had something that had a much lower uh, specific heat capacity like oil it would dump less heat into the area so it's something you need to keep in mind on top of that these guys use a lot of power um, these guys use 1200 watts and their smaller cousin that just uh, deals with gas only uses 240 um, so in here i'm bringing in 10 kilos of water cooling it down by 14 degrees pumping it through our room and we're coming in at 77 it's obviously going to come out at whatever temperature the room's up to which is now down to 91 and I've already started overheating it because I'm not actually cooling the thermal aqua tuna. Because all that heat's being dumped out right where the aqua tuna is. It's made out of thermium, which is like has the highest overheat temperature there is, and it's still overheating. So it is something you need to keep in mind that it's literally just moving the heat from one to the other. Um, next off, we have a thermoregulator. Same story, it's moving uh, heat, it's moving heat from one area to another we're using oxygen in this case so i'm going down 14 degrees from 94 down to 80. uh oxygen choice is you have lots of choices i was lazy and i used oxygen which has a specific heat capacity of one if i came down here and used hydrogen a specific heat capacity of 2.4 i'd have more cooling in this area but i also have more heat dumped in this area um so again something you need to keep in mind now a quick oh actually and i've got one last one that i want to show you is heat deletion so what i'm doing here is i'm bringing in hydrogen now this hydrogen i've been i've made wherever it's coming out of a steam vent i've had it sitting in tank wherever it's coming from and it's at 15 degrees now if i run that straight into the hydrogen generator i'm just using 15 degree hydrogen but what i can do is i can put some heat into that hydrogen first uh that's devon we should probably rescue devon Devon has been rescued. Uh, poor Devon. So, I could take the hydrogen uh, in, in at 15 degrees and literally just burn it up. Destroy it inside a hydrogen generator. Or I could actually run it through a hot room and absorb some of the heat out of that room, therefore removing it, and then take it and then destroy it in our hydrogen generator. This is actually referred to as deleting heat. This is the most common thing you'll actually do in oxygen included. You'll actually try and delete any heat that you have. So um, I've brought my polluted water from 95 degrees down to 94.4. Um, my Weezwarts aren't doing much better. My, well, my Weezwarts are doing a little bit better. My um, ant's doing a little bit better. Uh, my thermal aqua tuner is doing a lot better, and my thermoregulator is doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Pretty much absolutely nothing. So, there are different choices. Now, because I'm only bringing in hydrogen to one uh, hydrogen generator, I'm not actually using a lot of hydrogen, so there isn't a lot of throughput through the pipe. 
I'm only using 100 grams per second. Obviously, if I had 10 of these in a row and I was using a kilogram per second, I'd have a lot more cooling in this room um, by removing a lot more heat from it before I actually deleted that. Now, a couple of other things I want to show you. So, I actually have the exact same experiment. Uh, I've actually got a couple of experiments. So, I have uh, 5 degrees uh, polluted water on the right-hand side. I have 95 degrees uh, polluted water over here. What we can actually do is we can use solids, liquids, or gases to move temperature from one side to the other. So if I put in diamond, um, just because diamond has, it just disappeared. Uh, I'll just speed this up. Diamond has a, a fairly good thermal conductivity. Um, whether we want thermal conductivity or whether we want um, specific heat capacity all depends on on what sort of scenario you're trying to set up but if i dump that back on the ground diamond uh specific heat capacity of only 0.5 but it has a very very high thermal conductivity so it's going to heat up and cool down really fast but it's not going to carry a lot of a lot of heat or cooling with it um i have as it 95 degrees on one side five degrees on the other and just by moving this hot uh well moving this diamond through the room on a conveyor belt if we go to the conveyor overlay um literally all i have is i just have a conveyor shut off so the rail knows which way to go and all we're doing is we're just heating up the solid over here bringing it back in cooling it down here um and even then because of the speed of the machine it's not actually cooling all the way down to five degrees before it leaves and then heats back up and all, as it, all I'm doing is literally moving the heat from here, bringing it over here, moving the cooling from here, bringing it over here. Now, that's this case. What you can actually do is you can overlay your gases, your liquids, and your solids, and end up with this monstrosity. So this is uh, polluted water that is now 29 degrees, and polluted water that's now 66 degrees. This was 95, that was 5. But what I'm actually doing is I'm taking, I'm taking water and pumping it, or not even pumping it. It's because it's got a bridge on there. It thinks it needs to flow in this direction, and it's going to keep flowing in that direction forever because it, it it knows it goes in here and it knows it goes out there, and it's just going to keep doing that loop. So we're bringing in, uh, we're bringing in water at 31 degrees, and we're taking it out 65. So it's taking some heat from this room and dumping it in that room. If I go to my ventilation, again, same story. I'm taking hydrogen at 30 degrees uh, into the room, absorbing some of the heat and taking it back out at 66 degrees and dumping it back in this room. Finally, my conveyor overlay, exact same story. I'm using diamond again. We're bringing in, it in at 40 odd degrees and we're taking it out at 55 degrees. And basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to equalize the temperature between these two rooms. Um, unfortunately, my insulation is not perfect as it's passing through these tiles. Um, but yeah, we, we are literally just cooling. Well, we're not even cooling. We're moving heat from one room to the other. The last one we actually have for cooling, cooling. Uh, can I... Game, don't be difficult. I want, I want a tile. And I want a light. And... Nope, my steam got too cold. Uh, we need to sample the steam and bump the temperature back up to 415, roughly fill the room, done. So in here I have a steam turbine. Now a steam turbine actually deletes heat. That's the biggest thing about steam turbines. So they need steam at at least 125 degrees Celsius. So if you're, if you can either take something that's hot Add some water so you become so you get to steam and then make it hotter up to 125 degrees Celsius. That's when you can actually delete the heat through a steam turbine. If it's at you know 100 degrees, 80 degrees, that's the really frustrating temperature where you it's not quite hot enough to heat up, but it's not quite cool enough to cool down. So I'm giving it a couple of ideas, couple couple of ways that you can actually deal with some of these things. But yeah, steam turbines are a great way to actually delete heat. Now, um, as we can see, we have a certain amount of under normal operation and a certain amount of waste heat. This 
um, steam turbine is slowly heating up as it's dealing with hot steam. Now, one thing you can do, it's not 100% effective, but it's fairly effective, is once it takes that steam in, it actually converts into water at 95 degrees Celsius. As you can see, I've run a, um, a, oh, radiant, there we go, radiant pipe through, snake through here to actually cool down the steam turbine. It's not 100%, but it will provide you with some sort of cooling. Uh, if we take the temperature up to say 800 Kelvin. So we now got 500 degrees steam. As you can see, I'm now gonna get a lot more power out of this machine. But as soon as it maxes out at 850 watts, that excess heat starts getting dumped into the actual machine and into the actual surrounding room. So again, very, very good at deleting heat, but it does have its maximum. Um, yeah, we're, we're producing more and more heat. And as you can see, that, that machine's getting warmer and warmer. Uh, the liquid's still coming out. It's still at 95 degrees Celsius and is going to provide some sort of cooling to this machine. But normally, you're going to have to pro provide some sort of excess cooling on top of that. Uh, next, we have... Um, Probably the most common setup you're going to see throughout people's bases. It's going to be a couple of steam turbines. Numbers are in, numbers are another thing that you guys are going to have to work out for yourself. Um, or, or designs, I guess. A uh, couple of steam turbines dumping their, dumping their water output into a steam room with a couple of these thermo uh, aqua tuners. Now, these thermo aqua tuners, as I said, what they actually specialize in doing is moving the heat from one area to another. They are basically a heat pump. So I am cooling down this polluted water by running polluted water through the pipes. Uh, it's coming in at 79 degrees. It's going out at 93 degrees. I'm then cooling that, um, that piped water back down to then cool down the thermal mass of this room. Or in the case of your base, potentially run the pipe around your whole base to cool down your whole base by 14 degrees each time it goes through the loop. Um, and I've got two of these running back to back with a little bit of automation. I have said, hey, if the water is a bar, uh, if the water's above zero degrees, we're going to run the thermal aqua tuner. If the water does happen to get down to zero degrees, which is the point where it might possibly freeze in the pipes, we definitely don't want to run it. Um, so yeah, I'm moving the heat from this, 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 my heat source, my polluted water uh, heat source room into my thermal aqua tuners, which are then set up to dump the heat into this steam chamber which is then running these steam turbines to actually delete the heat so this has been running for quite some time as you can see my steam turbines haven't really heated up that much if they do i can always run one of these uh radiant pipes uh you know just take it up run it past the steam turbines to make sure they don't overheat before it runs back in here and keep this system running for pretty much forever actually we might just really quickly do that. Uh, I'm so going to overload a circuit. Uh, let's run that. Uh, I want to run... Yeah, whatever. Uh, intake, outtake. Uh, I didn't leave myself enough room. Um, just give me a liquid vent so you start running. So this is why I pre-plan these videos normally. Uh, liquid bridge. There you go. You have direction. Stop complaining. Right. So I'm again taking some fairly hot water to start with. I'm going to cool it down running it through this loop. Once it passes through this loop, it's going to absorb, dump a lot of temperature 
into... Yeah, they just overheated because I used warm liquid. My bad! But look, the liquid's down at 30 odd degrees now. Um, it's going to absorb heat out of these steam turbines and keep them hopefully chilly. At the same time, it's also going to dump its own heat into this room to make sure that we we continue producing steam inside this, this chamber. So, 40 degrees, 30, no, 40 degrees. Well, it's going in at 44, coming back out at 30. And... Overload. Yeah, okay, I didn't exactly have enough. I should have laid heavy watt wire. See, like I said, this is like enough to give you an idea on how to actually delete heat. So, quickly go back over the video. We have Wizwarts. Wizwarts actually provide cooling. We have the AET. Actually provides cooling, but not nearly as effective as for Wizwarts. Something you need to keep in mind. Um, we have the Ice Maker. Technically provides cooling. Not very good. Uh, we have the Thermo Aqua Tuner and the Thermo Regulator. Both these are heat pumps. They're going to move heat from one area to another. Um, they Really, that's all they do. Uh, we can see that that was our clear winner. Um, the, the Thermo Aqua Tuner was our clear winner. It's, it's deleted, well, it's moved the most amount of heat um, through all our test cases. But it also blew itself up in the, in the process because we heated it to 2,000 degrees Celsius. Um, we have the steam turbine. The steam turbine does actually delete heat um, and gives you some power. So not a bad combination. We also have different ways of moving heat around the base. So um, our conveyor rails, our liquid pipes, and our, our gas pipes, we can flood them with different items, move them from a hot room to a cold room and back and forth again to actually move the heat from one room to another. Um, these two are almost reached equilibri equilibrium in just a couple of cycles. Uh, we have our our most common setup for dealing with heat. So a couple of thermal aqua tuners, a couple of steam turbines, and just piping our hot, our, our cooled liquid through the hot room to then bring it back to the thermal aqua tuner to then dump that heat into a steam chamber which we're then going to burn up with some steam turbines this does require a lot of power it is something that you need to build very very carefully and very very sparingly unless you happen to have unlimited power on the map lastly we have um, deleting heat so this can be done by physically when something is consumed so into a power generator into a into a into a, into a um into your wood burner. You can heat up your wood before you burn it off. You can heat up your coal before you burn it off. You can... Oxygen. Oxygen. Our electrolyzer outputs oxygen and hydrogen at... Where are we? At 70 degrees Celsius. So you might as well heat your liquid, your, your water up to around about 70 degrees Celsius before you feed it into the machine. Um, on top of that, I will mention it. Otherwise, somebody's going to pull me up in the comments that water actually has a higher thermal mass than what uh, oxygen and hydrogen do so when you convert water into oxygen and hydrogen it's actually more efficient to cool down the hydrogen and the oxygen than it is to cool down the water to start with so if you actually end up a little bit over 70 degrees and then you cool down the oxygen uh, afterwards you're actually saving yourself a lot of uh, a lot of headache and a lot of material um, on top of that the one other one i do need to mention is venting stuff to space so if you have any, any liquids that you have spare, any gases that you have spare, you can use them to cool down something and then just vent that out to space. Once it's vented out to space, it's deleted along with the heat that came with it. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. A little bit longer than I liked, but heating and cooling is a little bit of a tri tricky topic in Oxygen Not Included, so I want to cover it as best I can. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, like the video if you like the video. Tell your friends if you, um, if you think they'll get something out of it as well. And don't forget, click the subscribe button because it's another week, which means another week of tutorials for Oxygen Included. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next one. Bye.